OpenAI released a new image generation feature some time ago and it took the world by storm. Everybody was generating Ghibli images and... Well, I guess that's all we did. Initially, the image gen feature wasn't available on the API, but now it is. You can come up with a lot of cool app ideas using the API version of the image gen, so I thought it would be fun to explore building a demo application using Superbase and OpenAI image generation feature. To get started, I needed a front end, and for this, I used Lovable to quickly create a beautiful UI. So just to go over the UI that Lovable has created for me, we have a upload section right here that we can upload images, and then we have a text area that we can write our prompt, and the generated image uh, will be displayed here, I guess. Uh, but for now, we don't have any backend, so we can select an image, we can select multiple images, um, just like this and we can write some prompt and hit generate. And it has this nice pulsing animation. So yeah, that's the UI that we got. I think we got something really beautiful that works. Now it's time to jump into the backend. So before diving into writing the backend code, I just wanted to go over the OpenAI API documentation because it's pretty cool. Uh, so we are at the image generation section and right off the bat at the top, we have this explore section. We can just click and view various examples of how to use this API. Um, for example, this image was generated generated from this image along with this prompt. And we can see some cool examples like this one. This one is combining two images. So this is like a plain business card type of image lying on the ground. And we have this logo. And the prompt is asking it to um, have the logo be printed on the business card. So pretty cool stuff that you can do with the image generation APIs. Uh, yeah, this one is again, um, updating the design of this food truck. I think this is just straight up generating an image from prompt. So yeah, pretty cool stuff that you can do with this API. Basically there are three things that you can do with it. You can have it generate an image from a prompt only, or you can upload some images and generate a new image based on those images along with a prompt. Or you can upload a masked image here and specify is where exactly you want the edit of that image to happen. So we have creation, edit, and then masked edit. And for all of them, we have a pretty easy to understand sample code right there in the docs, which is great. So for image generation, this is all the code that you need uh, on Node.js environment. And for edit images, um, these are the codes that you need. And for my demo app, I think I'm gonna focus on edit image for now. So what I've done is I've kind of copied this over to Lovable and asked it to basically create a Superbase Edge functions that kind of does this. It tried, but I guess since this is not in the training data, uh, it missed some spot here and there. So what I did is I have connected this lovable project to my GitHub. What that does is instead of uploading all the code to a GitHub repository that is managed by lovable, it uploads all the codes to my GitHub repository. That means I can just pull that GitHub repository, open it in Cursor, for example. And when I make changes here and push updates, to that GitHub repository, that change is automatically propagated to Lovable. So we have this two-way sync between GitHub and Lovable. Um, this is one thing I love about Lovable. Um, I can just create the UI and then uh, clone all the code locally, uh, open it on Cursor, and then I, ha I can have this two-way sync of taking care of all the UI stuff in Lovable or maybe some, of, some other stuff on Lovable. And then here and there, if I need to make some edits, I have access to Cursor and I don't need to worry about syncing the code uh, properly because it, it just is taken care of automatically. So I made the fixes on Cursor, pushed the changes to GitHub and also deployed functions to Superbase. And now the code is working. But before I walk you through the backend code, let's see the final app in action. So the UI hasn't changed. I can upload an image and let's do the Ghibli thing. Is Ghibli spelled like this? Ghibli fi this image. Let's see if this works. 
That's going to take a while for the image generation to happen, so. And there you go, nice Ghibli-fied image of myself. Let's try something else. We can delete the image and upload these four images right here. So we have some, uh, you know, hair care, skincare products and a nice basket here. Let's see if we can ask it to put all the three hair and skincare products into the basket. So let's hit generate. Now this is gonna take another few minutes, so. And there you go, we got a nice product ad for whatever these products are. Hair care, lotion, shampoo. Let's try something else then. We can upload my image and this elephant. Elephant being the Polskis God. And let's ask it to have the elephant be printed on the guy's t-shirt. And let's hit generate. And let's wait for a few more minutes. And there you go, we have the Postgres God printed right on my t-shirt and that is totally myself and nobody else. The nice thing about this is all the images are being persisted on Superbase. Uh, so we can head over to this Superbase project that's associated to the Lovable project. And we have two buckets here. We have the user images, which contains all the images, original images that the user has uploaded. You can see some test images that, that I've also uploaded. And then uh, all the generated results um, that the user have generated. In this particular bucket, all the images are being stored in the same folder. But if you're actually building a production ready app, you can uh, incorporate Superbase auth into it and you can have uh, folders for every users um, to keep it nice and organized. This is just a demo app, so I have omitted the authentication part, but you should always take care of auth when you're actually building a production ready app. But anyway, it's great that all these images are being persisted on Subway stores. If we, depending on what exactly you want to do within the app, you can, you know, maybe display the original images and maybe have the user edit it in some way or something like that. So now let me walk you through all the code that's making this all happen. So let's start up by looking at the front end code. We have a pages folder, which contains a index dot TSX, that's pretty much the only page we have. So within here, let's look at the UI. We have some image upload area, the prompt input, uh, generate button, and image preview component. Now, when the user presses the uh, generate button, it calls this handle generate function, which uh, does some checking up here, and then it takes all the image files and uploads them to Superbase. Let's take a look at this upload image to Superbase function. So it's taking a array of files, looping through them, and uploading them to storage, getting the public URL, and just returning that public URL. Simple. And uh, once that is done, it sets the upload image URLs as local state just to be able to display all those images in the UI. And it finally calls this edge functions, invoke process image. So that edge function is where all the magic happens. So let's take a look at that one. Um, we can go into superbase, functions, process image, and index.ts. So we have the Superbase client library and the OpenAI client library being loaded. Uh, it's doing some basic force checking up here. And once everything's good and it's checking, checking the parameters as well, um, once everything is good, it initializes a OpenAI client and it loops through the image URLs that are being passed to this function. So if we look at the parameters, we are passing the prompt as well as the image URLs. So it's looping through the image URLs and fetching them and then converting them to blobs. Uh, once we have that, 
So once we have the image blobs, then we are looping through that image blobs and converting them to file. Um, this, this file format is a OpenAI specific file format. Uh, and we can have, we brought this uh, to file function from the OpenAI SDK. So whatever that does, it, it converts the file into OpenAI compatible uh, format. So we run it through that function. We have an array of OpenAI uh, files. We just pass that to uh, this uh, OpenAI images.edit function. We specify this uh, model. That's the uh, chat GPT. What is it called? GPT image model. And we pass the images and we also pass the prompt. Pretty simple, right? Really simple. And all you have to do if instead you didn't want to edit image, but you wanted to just create image, all you have to do is let's go open the documentation. To create, you just have to, instead of call edit, you just have to call generate and pass the model and prompt. So yeah, um, editing it to uh, generate and delete the images and you're kind of good to go. And if you want to test out the masking feature, well, first you have to uh, create an image with, so what, how this works is it just looks black, but uh, really this masking part is supposed to be transparent. So you're supposed to, have the original image and an image, a version of that image where a certain portion of that image is transparent. And then that transparent portion would be considered as mask. So similar to the edit call, uh, you're still calling the edit, but uh, instead of just passing the image, you also pass the mask, um, which is this image. So really the same format. But yeah, uh, simple customization you can um, play with all the features, but this particular example, we're just sticking to the edit feature. So once you call the edit API or edit endpoint, you get back base 64 data. And basically, um, I just had it. I just had this AI generated. Basically you're converting that base 64 into a blob and then, uh, storing that into Superbase storage bucket and returning the final URL. And that's, that's really it. Pretty simple, right? Really simple. Okay. So final URL and returning it. So yeah, uh, very simple. I'll link this example in the description below. So if you want to check out the full code base, go ahead and check it out there. So yeah, for this particular demo app, we have the user enter the prompt, but if you're building some kind of custom app, for example, if you just want to build a Ghiblify app, then you don't want the user to be able to edit the prompt. In that case, you would just go into this edge functions and hard code, uh, the prompt, where'd it go? Um, so hard code the prompt here, instead of, you know, having the input field there, you just say, you know, Ghiblify it. Maybe something more specific than that. But yeah, you get the idea. So if you have a specific, specific theme for the app, you can just hard code your prompt, or you can maybe have, have both. You can have some of the prompt being entered by user, but you can have additional direction that are hard coded in your app. Um, all kinds of possibilities that you can play with this setup. But yeah, this is a really good starting point for you to get started with this open AI image generation API and build really cool apps on top of it.